Hello Home Slices, it's Kiera with Home Slice Adulting coming to you with my review for Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 10, Episode Number 12. Now I don't know what the title of the, the episode was, I probably should have gotten that together, but for, for me it was like a, a filler episode, a nothing episode. Before we get into this review, for those of you who are watching, I have started a book club this year in 2018 and we're reading a book a month and this month's book is Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. If any of you all are interested, I will be reviewing the book at the end of the month, which is February 28th. And my goal this year is to read more and not just watch trashy, <laughs> trashy television shows. So in order to be more cultured, I have, you know, started reading books. Last month, I read Tiffany Haddish's The Last Black Unicorn. You can check out the review for that on my channel as well. But um, you guys should really join me because people could always stand to be more well read. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this episode. Not much really happened. It was kind of a throwaway episode. Episode, but it was meant to transition us into this girls trip to Barcelona so first we'll start off with where we left off last time at the magazine party now I was under the impression that Portia was going to spill some interesting tea but it turned out to be kind of like nothing um, basically what Portia said was essentially reinforcing what everybody else was saying and Portia says that you know he was an opportunist and he had basically told somebody that he was going to use his relationship with Cynthia as an opportunity and that he does have um, he is seeing someone else or that he does have a girlfriend now Kim thinks that Cynthia should pay all the girls no mind and that um because of you know how people said that Kim shouldn't really have anything to do with Croy but she followed her heart instead of listening to everybody else um but it's like in Cynthia's case it's a little bit different Cynthia's emotions are very raw and Cynthia is like kind of naive a little bit and she I guess kind of cares what people think um but anyways uh we see Mama Joyce wants to talk to Portia and so um y'all Shamia is a liar or she told a, a fib this time around Shamia told Todd that his speech was a tearjerker in no shape form or fashion I know we probably didn't see the whole speech but let me tell you something the way he started off the speech was not a tearjerker. The way that he shaded Portia and Kim. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know what she was talking about. But moving on, we see Cynthia and Will on the car, you know, on the ride home. And now Will, you know, now that he hasn't been bombarded with accusations by all of the girls, he kind of, you know, has some cojones now and starts basically telling her, well, I don't have time for these accusations and what did I sign up for? And Will says that basically that there's nothing that Cynthia can offer him that he doesn't already have. And there is something that Cynthia can offer him, and that's notoriety, that's fame. And um, I could definitely see him having a motive for being, you know, an opportunist. Um, when he's trying to argue that he has no motive, so that's that's really not true. But moving on, we'll talk about Mama Joyce and Portia. And this interaction is showing that Mama Joyce is either really getting older and settling down in her you know, elderliness, um, or maturity, that's the word I was looking for, or, um, she's just really calmed down, you know, as a person, or she's just getting too old for all of the, the Mama Joyce <laughs> BS, and they showed several examples of Mama Joyce going off, which is very funny to me. But Mama Joyce is playing nice, and Candy apparently didn't know about the interaction that they have. And so Mama Joyce is asking the hard questions. Um, usually I'm not for Mama Joyce getting involved in Candy's business. Um, because I find and other people find that Candy is the type of person who has other people do her dirty work. Um, as far as it comes to, you know, not interacting with people who have hurt her or, or things along those lines. But I was kind of here for it this time. Um considering how severe the accusations and the circumstances were now Portia maintains that she had pretty much no reason not to believe that Phaedra wasn't telling her the truth 
regarding the allegations about the sex dungeon and trying to drug her. Um, and Portia says that, you know, Phaedra was my friend. I was loyal to her and she was a lawyer and Portia on top of that is a little bit naive. So I'm, I still don't know if I believe that Portia really was under that impression or not because the way that it was brought up was during an argument. And so I think Portia was just using that as fuel and there's a chance that she really didn't believe that and that she had just heard it and was bringing it up as fuel for that argument. But um, either way it goes, to me it kind of doesn't matter anymore um, because I'm under the impression that Candy is such a grudge holder that it doesn't matter what Portia does, they will never be back cool again. And if you think about it, Candy wasn't cool with the girls from Escape for almost 20 years. There's no way that in one season Candy is going to be okay with the accusations um, that Portia had, um, you know, within just one season. So that's not really going to work out. But moving on, um, Mama Joyce. <laughs> Mama Joyce said that Candy took a lemon and made lemonade. And I did not like that. I was under the impression that everything was okay with Todd and Mama Joyce and everything. Which, you know, it probably is. But I didn't, I felt like she was kind of going back to her old ways by calling Todd a lemon. But moving on, um, I felt like Mama Joyce was playing Portia. Um, a little bit when she called her loyal or whatever. And that, you know, she was loyal to a fault or whatever. But Mama Joyce says that. Portia, you know, in order to try to make things better with Candy, should just try to own up to everything that, that went on. But moving on, we'll talk about Cynthia. And so we'll first talk about Cynthia and Nene. They get together. Nene is still mad about Kenya, you know, going to Cynthia first. Um, but who cares? Moving on. Uh, Cynthia says she felt a little bit betrayed. But Nene felt like she was just being protective of Cynthia. And so, um, you know, protecting him, her against a guy who could be an opportunist. And so Nene pretty much says that Cynthia wants to get with a guy who is more like Peter as opposed to someone like Will. But so Cynthia is putting, you know, her relationship with Will on ice. And she's like, well, you know, I have a bucket list. Oh, sorry, y'all. I had a long day. I drove. Um, from Nashville to Louisiana today for like eight and a half hours, so I'm tired. But, um, I wanted to go ahead and get this review out of the way. Um, so yeah, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Cynthia, you know, to get something off of her bucket list, wants to go to Barcelona and she wants to take the girls. And so, uh, Cynthia has a budget, so she <laughs> wants opulent Nini, who's, you know, fancy and rich for several years now. To plan some of the activities so that she doesn't have to be bogged down with the, most of the costs. <laughs> Cynthia says she found an Airbnb. And y'all, there are some very, you know, suitable Airbnbs um, that will suit any person's taste. Whether it's super low budget or, you know, a higher budget. But um, moving on, um, Cynthia has a little bit of an attitude towards Eva. You can tell. But, um, you know. Eva at least spiced up the last episode. Heck, they should bring her on the trip. Now, moving on. Kim is, uh, her name comes up. Uh, and, uh, y'all, I'm actually a little bored doing this review. This episode really didn't really have much. But there was already an issue with Kim being invited. Then we see Cynthia and Peter. I don't like Peter. I've never liked Peter. I never will like Peter. I don't like that he's back on this show he's no longer married to Cynthia I don't like that he has a confessional he's no longer married to Cynthia um I feel like they have a weird relationship and that Cynthia's insistence on that they be friends is very weird and that it makes their ties harder to sever I feel like they should not be business partners if they are no longer together and that 
she's using what she can to kind of keep a hold on Peter to the point where they'll be friends. And Peter's just not there because, you know, he didn't initiate the divorce. And while I do not like Peter, I felt like he told her some things that she needed to hear. And I felt like he is treating her much better now that they are no longer together. Their whole situation is just a little bit weird to me. So I'm going to move on from that. We'll talk about Kenya real quick. We saw her um, going to her doctor. She's 46 years old and she is six weeks late on her period. She's trying not to get her hopes up, but she wants to check on it to see if she has her period or not. And, you know, to be honest, it could be menopause because she is in the age group of a woman who would be going through menopause so she doesn't want to get her hopes up because it kind of could be either or and so apparently the urine test was inconclusive so um, they need to do a blood test and she has to wait for the results to come back so um Kenya decided to pass on Barcelona and if I thought that I was pregnant I probably would pass on going on an international trip as well um, but Kenya is just really on this kick to where she feels like it's like getting married has like instantly matured her to the point to where she doesn't want to read people and you know to the point where she wants to just focus on her man a hundred percent and I feel like in the real world there's nothing wrong with your life changing because you get married but when you have a job where you have to participate in order to be paid it's um it it doesn't necessarily work that way uh particularly if it would have been nice if you had infer informed your employer that you were getting married and kind of helped them, you know, into your world of, of being married and, you know, had married a guy who was okay with being on film. I feel like her, her attitude towards this whole thing is one that she's adopted from her husband. He seems like he's very, like, stern and a little bit controlling. I don't think I'll be a fan of his. But um, the whole thing kind of bored me, but I am happy for Kenya as a person, but as a character on this show, um, not so much. But moving on, we'll talk about Portia, who is hosting a no beef dinner, which is a cute theme. Uh, I felt like that was, um, I felt like that was very cute. Um, but, uh, moving on, the people who have the most beef with Portia are not coming, which is interesting enough, but I think this is a move in the right direction. I'm very happy that Portia is working over some of the other people in the group. Um, because I think once she gets them on board, the other dominoes will be a little bit easier to fall. But moving on, um... Portia did invite everybody the same day as the event so that kind of explains why some people didn't show up but Marlo was being shady as soon as she pulled up and Marlo's whole condo could fit in um Portia's house like twice over but she's like oh this welcome mat is too small maybe she don't know any better but then Marlo brings a a fur something some type of fur to a vegan dinner so maybe she don't know any better hmm moving on uh I was wondering if Kim was being dropped off at Portia's house by her family or if they were going to wait in the driveway. Now, here's... <laughs> I feel like that's very weird. I actually know a family that's kind of like that. Like, they wait in the car for each other, like, a whole lot. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I kinda, I don't have an opinion on my friend doing that but I feel like that the Kim and Croy and family waiting in the car type of thing is very weird um and it just gives Kim an excuse um to kind of make everything about her and to leave early if she needs to um but moving on Sheree is getting the tea that she missed because um you know involving Cynthia and Will in the whole situation at the Essence party that Candy had uh, Marlo doesn't like that Cynthia and Kenya are friends because Cynthia is sensitive. I don't understand what she means by that, but moving on. Um, Marlo gets questioned about bringing Peter up, and 
after they kind of said it, I could understand why Cynthia was kind of caught off guard by it and thought it was a little shady on Marlo's part. Um, for bringing Peter up and saying that they were coordinating it kind of came off like I guess Peter was Marlo's date or Peter was tr P uh, Marlo was trying <laughs> Marlo was trying to shade uh, was trying to be messy and, and bring up Peter's name in Will's company or something along those lines but you know Marlo didn't mean anything by that and I honestly uh, believe that now Marlo is buzzed and she's saying that she has to visit her cousin in a nursing home. And then Portia says, oh, you talking about your boyfriend, your new boyfriend. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. And moving on, Kim wants to bring Croy to Barcelona for health reasons. Now, here's the deal. If Croy was a healthcare professional, um, if Kim was married to medicine, married to somebody who practiced medicine, that would make sense. But I don't think that Croy would do anything that anybody on the same plane wouldn't do for Kim as well. Like some of the girls don't like Kim, but if Kim is having a medical emergency, nobody's going to deny her health care or, or help or anything like that. So it's like if you had a stroke on a four hour flight, then maybe you should just not come on this 10 hour flight instead of bringing along a man on a girl's trip. And again, Candy says, you know, Kim feels as if the rules don't apply to her. And it's like, if you are if you were a full cast member, maybe, but you're just um, a friend of the show at this point. So maybe you should follow the rules. Like either don't come at all, um, or come and don't bring Croy. Like, moving on. Now, um, yeah, they have a, a relatively good night, and Portia wants to continue that energy on their next, um, on their next adventure in Barcelona. And so, Sheree, they show her doing more construction on her house. How much is she gonna do to the house? I, I think this was her basement, maybe. I don't know. Moving on, because we know that was unfinished. But um, we see some of the girls on their way to go to the, the airport to go to Barcelona. And that's when they find out that Kim is not coming. And apparently Nini was very vocal about Croy not coming on the trip. And while I feel like Nini can be very intense sometimes, I feel like she says a lot of the things that other people want to say but don't have the intensity about it that Nini does. And so I think... Nini was happy about her not coming because she wouldn't be bringing Croy, which I think is okay. Nobody likes Kim anyway, and she just has this very nasty energy about her at times. And so she's, Nini says something about Croy having booty implants, and I just can't deal with her. I think that's going a little bit too far. But moving on, Sheree said that, you know, there's nothing wrong with you know, a husband that's going to chauffeur you and wait in the car or in the parking lot. And I'm like, yeah, that's okay in Atlanta. But in Barcelona, there's not going to be, like, you're already going to have a chauffeur. So what purpose would Croy serve? If you all are on a bus going to an adventure in Barcelona, he's going to have to be on that bus with you. And you all can't have your girl talk moments like you normally would because he would be tagging along. Um, so I'm, I think it's good that Kim's not coming. Um, and <laughs> Sheree is talking about, you know, being spoiled. How spoiled are you with Tyrone in jail? Okay. But moving on, that's it, y'all. I'm surprised I was able to talk this long about this. But we'll talk about what's happening next time. Um, I kind of can't believe we waited two weeks for this nothing episode. But moving on, next time on Real Housewives of Atlanta, we see that the ladies are in Barcelona and Minnie has a takeover spirit and Candy is kind of not having it. Um, but moving on, Cynthia is getting an attitude when she's questioned about Will. And I can see that she's kind of over it. You know, Will is not on the trip. Um, so I think, I think the girls need to drop it. Uh, but... Lastly, the Roach stuff um, with Nene and Kim is going to, you know, hit the fan. So, finally we'll get um, caught up on that. Because we know it was like a big deal in the blogs and in the media. But it hasn't blown up on Real Housewives just yet. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, 
I'm sorry this video was so long for this nothing episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta. But um, you all like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Um, I did a detangling um, product review for a detangling brush for natural hair. So if you have natural hair and you have trouble detangling, you're definitely going to want to check it out. Thank you guys for watching and peace out home slices.